Because when you allow division, when you allow these little disagreements, it is my area, it is my place, it is my this, it is my that, it's not ours. When you allow that, the numbers grow. The gangsters see the division. And they say, look, they are fighting. It's our chance to penetrate. And when you as adults fight, the young people look at you and say, if they cannot understand each other, who understand each other best? These gangsters, they do. Let's rather go and stand with them and listen to what they have to offer us. You will lose, Nesna, if you do not deal with these so-called divisions, the so-called past that holds you captive. Your streets won't be safe. And when your streets are no longer safe, there's only one person to blame, not the gangsters, but yourself. Gangsters do not have any power. They feed from division. They feed from fear. They feed from confusion. They feed from fathers not taking responsibilities for being at home when they're supposed to be at home. They feed from where mothers are so much disorientated about various other things instead of worrying about what they need to worry about. They feed on a father that doesn't want to pay attention to this boy who just wants to play ball. This gang member has time. He's got gang time. Like, come here, nigga, let's go play. That's what he does. When you fail to play, and when you fail to be a parent, they become those things to your children. And your children trust them. Why? Because they deliver on their promises. You want a pair of Nikes? No problem. Come to my place at 6, I'll get you a pair. Anyway, so I joined the gangs when I was 12 years old. And the only reason why I joined the gangs, or one of the reasons, not the only one, one of the reasons why I joined the gangs is because I had what we have now basically been talking about a lot was the absence of a father. Um, so what happened is that I had to also look at that when I tell people about one of the reasons why I joined the gangs because my father was never really, he was there, he was present, he was in the house. He was in the next room, he was in the corridors, he was in the kitchen, I saw him. But we didn't really have a conversation, we didn't talk much. The only time me and my dad really had a good conversation is when I did something wrong. Then he would have, either have to reprimand me or he would have to tell me that you are grounded or something like that. So my direct communication with my father was, do something wrong, you have your father's attention. So that's just how I operated because as a young person I thought that's the way in which my father wants me to communicate. And I can imagine how many other boys out there are thinking the same way. That if I do something wrong, my father will talk to me. If I do something wrong, my father will have a conversation with me. Even though he reprimands me, but as long as he's talking to me, that's important. So, I got into his car, but the conversation that we had is something that I didn't discuss with you yesterday. The conversation we had was like, he used this word that he sees potential in me. And I couldn't understand why this guy who didn't know me from above so could use the terms, I see potential in you. And as we were talking, he says, I know what you are going through. I know what you are going through, but don't worry about that. You know, I'm going to be your mentor. I'm going to be the one that's going to guide you. I'm going to be the one that's going to show you what it's like to be a man. Now, this is a guy that's not my father. He doesn't stay in the house with me. He doesn't know me from above, so... But the fact that he is recruiting me into his gang by the words he used is what I wanted to hear. Because I want to be a man. I wanted to know what it's like to be a man. What was it like to be respected and guys in my street should stop making fun of me. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to be respected. And this guy identified that in me and he said, I will give you all of those things. How to be a man, how to be respected, how to be dominant. How to be the leader of your own life. Beautifully put in those words. Now imagine a 12 year old listening to a man saying that to him. A very influential man. And this guy telling me that I know your circumstances at home. Don't worry, I'll take care of all your needs. I surprised you this morning, man. Shame. I know you had very high hopes for me. I know you had very high hopes for me. I know you had very high hopes for me. I don't talk about that. Because I don't see you there. 
Get it? I don't see you in prison. I see you with your beautiful wife and your two babies. Going to work and your wife kisses you and says, baby, have a good day at work. I see you getting into your car, driving to your office, sitting there and doing something awesome. That's why I see you. You get me? That's my blessing on your life. You have an opportunity to either take it or use it. Or how do you want me to see you? As the general that I was, you know if I was a general, you know where I see you. So he's made ready for you. Get it? You got it? So he's made ready for you. Like, wait. You got it? Is that where you want to be? I'm being real and honest with you because that's what you're going to be. You go to prison. You're not going to be as strong as me. I promise you. Because you are small, I'll have you one and I'll have you a and I'll have you fuck what they eat. And I'll have you here. Is that what you want? It's that clear. I don't want to see young boys out there admiring me for being my past. I want to see young boys standing and saying, now that he's coming, and he's coming with a new plan, and we are going to work together in achieving that plan. I want to 